Hello friends! I'm sure most of you have tried different kinds of fast food at least a couple of times in your life. Someone discovered this type of food by trying some delicious french fries. For others, it was a tasty cheeseburger. And someone else first got the taste of a juicy hamburger or some tender chicken wings. Of course, the main advantage of fast food is how quickly it can be prepared and consumed and obviously how inexpensive it is. But few people know that the first fast food industry appeared as much as 100 years ago in America. It was there that the first White Castle company was established, selling rather unusual burgers for that time for only 5 cents. It's also worth mentioning that it was their low price and the way they looked that attracted the customers. Gradually, the company grew and developed, introducing many new dishes to its menu each year. However, it all changed the moment its first competitor in the face of McDonald's appeared on the market. We'll talk about the history of this restaurant chain in the next videos on our channel, but today, we'll talk about another equally well-known fast food giant. Well, as you have already understood from the title, it's the KFC Company. It's worth noting that KFC is one of the oldest chains of fast food in the United States, famous primarily for its insanely delicious fried chicken. And believe me, the history of its creation is just as impressive. After all, its founder, Colonel Harlan Sanders, became a millionaire only at the age of 70. Amazing, isn't it? Fate wasn't always kind to him and sure didn't make his road to success easy. But despite how difficult it sometimes got, Sanders always found the strength to keep moving towards his goal. But first things first. Harlan Sanders was born on September 9, 1890, in Indiana. Unfortunately, when he was only five years old, his father passed away. At that point, his mother had to get several jobs in order to provide for their family of four. Meanwhile, the five-year-old boy had to take on the role of a nanny, looking after his two younger siblings in the absence of their mother. He learned to cook at the age of six, thus proving to the whole world that he was already an independent and an adult person. The boy was an excellent student, who stood out among his peers for his extraordinary intelligence and passion for all things new. Unfortunately, given the situation in his family after the death of Harlan's father, his whole life didn't go as planned. He quit school in 1902, when he was in the seventh grade. It happened because he didn't want to live with his family anymore. After his mother remarried, he was forced to leave home. The thing was that his stepfather often beat him, which is why, at the age of 13, Harlan packed up his things and moved to live with his uncle in New Albany, having received his mother's blessing first. At that time, there was public unrest in Cuba against the American occupation. Thus, the U.S. Department of the Army began a campaign to recruit volunteers to replenish the American troops on the island. Then, not knowing what to do next with his life, Harlan forged his date of birth and volunteered for the U.S. Army in 1906 at the age of 16. It is worth noting that Harlan served the entire term as part of the logistics unit, where he spent most of his time shoveling horse manure in army stables, as is stated in his biography. Honorably discharged, he arrived by sea to the port of New Orleans, after which he got to the railroad tracks and jumped on the first freight train that was passing by. It turned out that it was going along the Mississippi River, and thus the man ended up in St. Louis, Missouri. Thanks to his communication skills, the young man managed to get several jobs at once, and almost everywhere he was welcomed with open arms. By the age of 22, the man could safely boast of a decent list of professions. For example, he worked as an assistant forge and a railroad rolling stock cleaner. Then he worked as a fireman at a Tennessee fire station, but he got fired because of a fight with another fireman, after which he moved to Arkansas. During his younger years, Sanders had to work in many places, on a steamboat, as an insurance agent, farmer, and even as a miner. But during all those years, the thought of starting his own business never left his mind. Therefore, he saved up some money and managed to rent out a small shell gas station on Highway 25 in 1930, when he was already 40 years old. But he had a good reason for renting it, because at that point, he already knew what he wanted to do. A little earlier, Sanders had a brilliant idea – to rent the station and convert it into a diner. Thus, he remodeled the station on his own. He furnished it with six dining tables and put in a small kitchen in the corner. The menu included steaks and country ham, which quickly grew popular among the customers. Sanders clearly understood what he was doing, because for several kilometers of the road, there was not a single place to eat, so he decided to use that to his advantage. It was the most basic diner. There are thousands of them around the country now, but that's exactly how Harlan's story began. 
things were going pretty well, and having saved up a little money, the man bought another gas station in 1934. There, Sanders introduced a completely new menu, which now included only fried chicken dishes. He made all the food on his own and according to his own taste, and it is worth saying that people appreciated his culinary talent. Thus, Diner quickly got many regulars, and things only went uphill from then. But that wasn't enough for him either, because he wanted to create something that didn't yet exist in America. Harland was very ambitious. By that time, he was no longer young, but even at his age, the man decided to get his first degree in hospitality. Studying gave its results. Sanders was full of new ideas and ambitions. He easily upgraded the diners he already had at the time and completely changed their menu. And it is worth mentioning that it was a great decision, as just a week later, rumors about the most delicious chicken from Kentucky spread across several states, and the line to Sanders' diners reached several kilometers. Amazing, isn't it? In 1936, the man received his first honorary title of Colonel of Kentucky from Governor Ruby Lafoon, who often came by his place. In honor of this event, the entrepreneur expanded his diner to 142 seats in a couple weeks, thus making it the most popular spot in the area. The same year, the entrepreneur bought a roadside motel and named it Sanders Yard and Cafe. You might ask yourself, why is everything so delicious at KFC? But you don't usually think about how each particular dish is made. Initially, most of the dishes in the Sanders Diner were cooked in an ordinary iron frying pan. The process usually took at least 35 minutes. Of course, this wasn't good enough for the entrepreneur. After all, cooking time and quality were his main priorities. The deep fryer, commonly used at the time, wouldn't work for the man either. He was convinced that deep frying his chicken would make it too dry, and he did find a solution a bit later. Thus, in 1939, he decided to cook his chicken in pressure cookers. Yes, they were originally intended for cooking vegetables, but this detail didn't seem to face Sanders in the least. The new cooking method significantly reduced the cooking time and didn't have a negative effect on the taste of the food. To prepare each of the dishes, the entrepreneur used his famous recipe of a mixture of 11 herbs. Until this day, the composition of this mixture remains a secret. Sanders himself revealed only two components, and they're nothing special, salt and pepper, declaring that every housewife has the rest of the ingredients on their shelf as well. Thus, thanks to his unusual cooking methods, in 1950, Governor Lawrence Weatherbyer recommissioned Hardland Sanders as a Kentucky colonel. After that, the man decided to rethink his image. It was about this time that Sanders started to appear in public wearing a white suit and a tie around his neck, grew a goatee, and started introducing himself as the Colonel. Initially, most people perceived this image change as a joke, but sometime later, they started taking the new style seriously, and many even began to imitate him. He never wore anything else in public places for the last 20 years of his life, alternating between a warm woolen suit in winter and a light cotton one in summer. As he became more and more successful, Sanders began to lead an active social life. He joined the Rotary Club and was a Freemason and a member of the Shriners. His life was going great, and by that time Harlan had already managed to earn a lot of money. However, he was only known in the local market. He was just a man with two local establishments. And friends, we might have never even gotten to hear about him, but one day everything changed. The fact was that most of his customers were people driving on the highway. However, in 1955, a new highway plan was published in one of the newspapers, which took Sanders by surprise. It turned out that the new highway would detour the part where his restaurants were located. Thus, the man was about to lose all prospects of further expanding his business. The news devastated the 65-year-old man. Everything he'd been building for so long was about to lose its value in an instant. Having thought long and hard about what he should do next, the elderly businessman made a very important decision in his life. He sold his diners at a price three times less than their real value and left to travel the U.S. in search of investors for a new business. It's hard to say that things were going well for him. It took Sanders two years to finally sell his restaurant franchise, and his first buyer was Pete Harmon of Salt Lake City, Utah. By that time, Harmon was already the manager of one of the largest restaurants in the city. It was under his leadership that the name KFC was coined, which stands for Kentucky Fried Chicken. But none of them could have even imagined at that point how popular this very chicken would become. 
Selling Sanders chicken for just one year more than tripled the restaurant's turnover, while the customers started ordering that particular dish more and more often. It is also believed that it was the impressive sales of the Sanders chicken that inspired Harmon to come up with the bucket concept we all know so well. In 1957, he offered its customers a lunch bucket, which included 14 pieces of chicken, five buns, and sauce. And it only cost $3.50. Of course, the cost and taste of the product quickly won over its customers, and ever since then, the phone was ringing off the hook, as everyone wanted to buy a franchise. By the beginning of the 1960s, there were already 200 restaurants. Thus, the company became the leader among other restaurants in the USA in just one year, which caused everyone to start talking about the KFC phenomenon. Meanwhile, Sanders acquired his first headquarters, located in Kentucky. But friends, our story has already taken us to 1960, and by that time, the entrepreneur was already 70 years old. At this age, a lot of people are already starting to think about death. Harlan lost interest in developing his business and set about to sell it. Thus, in 1964, Jack Macy and John Brown Jr. picked a favorable day according to the astrological horoscope and wrote up a proposal to Sanders to purchase his company for $2 million. Having seen the amount in the letter, and after checking the horoscope for the day, the entrepreneur signed all the documents and sold his company. Under the agreement, Sanders didn't just get paid $2 million, but also got to perform the product quality control function of the company, as well get paid a pension for the rest of his life. It's also worth noting that when Sanders sold KFC Corporation, the deal did not include Canadian restaurants. In 1965, Harlan moved to Ontario to control his Canadian franchises and continued to open new ones, but the process no longer required his active participation. All he needed to do was give his consent because entrepreneurs and restaurateurs stood in line for it. That was also the year when the first KFC restaurant was opened in Preston, United Kingdom. Even retired, the Colonel didn't just sit around. In 1970, at the age of 80, he starred as himself in the comedy The Finks. And in 1973, he sued Hubline Incorporated, the then parent company of KFC, over the alleged misuse of his image to promote products that he didn't develop. But he reached his peak in 1976, when Harlan was already 86 years old. Independent research recognized Sanders as the second most famous person in the world. As for the main control of the company, it was in the hands of Massey and Brown. The new leaders also built a new concept for the chain. The first, and more importantly successful innovation, was the takeaway service model. The interior of all the restaurants was changed, leaving only white and red colors in the design. Only various kinds of chicken were left on the menu. Of course, Sanders didn't approve of some of the changes in the company. He was furious when the new management decided to move the headquarters to Tennessee. He also didn't approve of the company's new franchising policy. The situation became so tense that Sanders even shared his dissatisfaction with the Washington Post. In the end, most of the company's executives convinced Sanders that the new management policy was more effective, bringing the financial documents for several quarters as evidence. The entrepreneur kept his shares worth $1.5 million, but he no longer took an active part in the operations of the company. Although he still remained somewhat involved in it. After all, the history of KFC is famous for its huge number of scandals and litigations. By the end of the 1960s, the total number of KFC restaurants crossed over 850, and the company took sixth place in the U.S. in terms of sales. In 1970, Massey resigned as head of the company, and Brown took his place. Under his leadership, KFC opened another 2,000 establishments and expanded its borders to 48 countries. But Brown wasn't particularly interested in promoting fast food restaurants, and for the first time ever, the company went through a crisis which lasted about half a year. The business that once got too big for Sanders eventually became unmanageable for Brown too. In July 1971, he sold the company to Hubline Incorporated for $285 million. And then Sanders stepped into the fight again. As it turned out, the entrepreneur didn't like the policy of the new leadership. The signature chicken was no longer on the menu and the new dishes were so expensive that the chain started losing its customers. Thus, Sanders turned to the media once again, this time to criticize the quality of the food. My God, the gravy is horrible. They buy tap water for 10 to 15 cents a thousand gallons 
and then they mix it with flour and starch and end up with pure wallpaper paste. And another thing, the new crispy chicken is nothing in the world but a damn fried dough ball stuck to some chicken. This review got Sanders sued for defamation. In turn, he tried to sue Hubline for $122 million and also demanded compensation for the misuse of his personal image as an advertisement for KFC. The situation was resolved amicably out of court and Sanders was paid $1 million as an apology. In 1977, the new owners of the company reconciled with Sanders, allowing him to make his own adjustments to management policies. But unfortunately, three years later, Colonel Sanders passed away. By this time, his brainchild already had 6,000 establishments in 48 countries. In the same year, it was decided to use the image of Sanders as an advertisement for KFC products, as a tribute to the founder. Sanders died in Louisville, Kentucky from pneumonia on December 16, 1980, at the age of 90. But he was ill with an acute form of leukemia, diagnosed earlier in June of that year. Sanders was buried at Cave Hill Cemetery in the famous white suit with a thin black tie. After the death of the founding father, the company continued to grow, opening more and more restaurants. In 1986, KFC was bought out by PepsiCo, and a few years later, John Cranor took over the management of the company. It was Cranor who reconstructed almost the entire KFC chain. He invested $50 million in the repairs and also suggested connecting the checkout counter to the kitchen and the order window. In the early 1990s, the company underwent a drastic rebranding. Popular new dishes appeared on the menu, including spicy wings, popcorn chicken, and a spicy chicken burger. In 1994, after yet another struggle for a place in the sun, the company passed into the hands of Roger Enrico and David Novak. Thanks to Novak, new items were added to the menu, namely the chicken bites, which immediately became the most popular item on the menu. Novak moved away from chicken skewers and introduced a new product called Tender Roast. Thanks to the successful approach of David Novak, as well as the growth over 10 financial quarters, it was decided to appoint him to the position of president and CEO of the central organization of KFC. Three years later, the company fell into the hands of Yum Brands, one of the largest fast food restaurant corporations. With Yum Brands, the KFC chain became known all over the world. Countless restaurants were opened. The fried chicken from Kentucky became especially popular among Chinese people. This division has become one of the largest in the chain. Today, KFC is considered the second largest fast food restaurant chain in the world. Sanders had always insisted on frying the chicken in vegetable oil, but in the 1990s, the company switched to cheaper alternatives, soy and palm oils. One can only imagine how Sanders would have reacted to all these innovations. Perhaps he would have sued them or attacked him with his fists to resolve all the issues, but we'll never get to know for sure. Harlan Sanders' original recipe for 11 herbs and spices is considered one of the best-known trade secrets in the food industry. The recipe wasn't patented because the expiration of the patent would violate its culinary secret. The trade secret, on the other hand, allows one to keep the recipe as intellectual property indefinitely. A copy of the recipe autographed by Sanders is kept in a safe at the company's headquarters. There are also 11 bottles with the herbs and spices indicated in the recipe. To keep the secret, the company divides the production of ingredients into several stages, and several different laboratories are engaged in their production, all classified as secret. As for the logo, the first logo of the company appeared in 1952. It featured the inscription Kentucky Fried Chicken and an image of the colonel. The logo depicting the abbreviation KFC was created by a New York firm and first introduced in 1991. It depicted the face of the colonel not in brown, but in blue tones. Landor updated the logo in 1997 with a new image of the colonel. Now it included thinner lines and looked more realistic. In 2006, the logo was redesigned by the San Francisco firm Tesser. The colonel's white suit was changed to an apron, and the colors and overall look were made more defined. According to Greg Dedrick, president of KFC in the U.S., the change communicates to customers the realness of Colonel Sanders and the fact that he was a real chef. At the moment, the company has about 30,000 employees, and its profits are growing every year. But it isn't all as good as it may seem. Even despite the great and obvious success, the company has big problems with Greenpeace. Moreover, the number of people who prefer to eat unhealthy fried foods is decreasing every year. 
people have begun to pay more attention to their health and nutrition, and therefore, they aren't as eager to eat at food courts where they can buy something from KFC. Meanwhile, most of the younger generation know nothing about Colonel Sanders featured on the logo. But be that as it may, friends, KFC is still the second largest chain in the world after McDonald's, with an annual income of over $30 billion. And what's most important in this story is the understanding that everything big starts small and starts exactly the same with ordinary people like you and me. And once again proves to all of us that it's never too late to start because Harlan Sanders opened his roadside diner with six tables in the corner only at the age of 40. And by the age of 50, he was still an unknown entrepreneur. And now the whole world knows his name. Friends, how do you personally feel about fast food in general and KFC in particular? Do you often eat at such restaurants? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Well, that's all for today. I really hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.